I know what you are feeling. I can read your mind. I am fully aware of what makes you angry about silver. And the culprit and the source of that frustration is right before you on this screen. I'll explain as we explore. Yeah, you're piping hot mad. And you probably would be lying if you said you weren't, at least to some degree. There's a level of frustration with silver, even with the most positive among us. Why the heck is silver's price not performing so well? Even though it is right now, as I record this video, over $31 an ounce. Well, it wasn't terribly long ago when silver was trading at almost $50 an ounce. We tend to measure based off of the anomalies in the market. In other words, the all-time high. We very readily and easily forget the low points when silver was trading below $12 an ounce in March of 2020. In fact, if adjusted for inflation, silver's price should be in the triple digits by now. And the culprit for that is how we measure it compared to gold. This metal right here, that is the source of our frustration. Why is gold doing so well and silver is not? It's a very perplexing question, and I'm going to answer that question for you in this video. Because I think once we have a better understanding of the difference between silver and gold, even though they both are indeed monetary metals, the better understanding we have of that difference, the more likely we are to not just dismiss certain things about the silver market as compared to the gold market. They're both very different metals, but also very similar. And those similarities and differences are part of what is so frustrating about the silver market in particular. Silver market is, uh, is one of those that trades like gold in base off the of spot price. They're both monetary metals. They both are mentioned hundreds of times in the Bible. They both are recognized in the Constitution as money between the states, Article 1, Section 10. And they both are metals that we can accumulate to preserve our wealth. They are both assets. But that's really kind of where the similarities end. In any other way, they are very different and have been for a long time. It's really only until now that we're starting to see it manifest itself so great that we are starting to see the gold to silver ratio widen and stay wide to the point now where most of us have abandoned the normal gold to silver ratio. What is normal these days with regards to gold to silver ratio? Nobody really knows. But one thing we do know is that uh, silver is more versatile and is the most versatile metal on the periodic table. Therein lies part of the clue. Gold is much less diverse. What happens to the gold? It is treasured. It is held in central banks and it is held by individuals. Individuals and central banks hold and treasure gold, either in decorative elements such as jewelry or as a savings vehicle. Silver is mostly consumed. In fact, really, more than ever before, silver's du dual role is more apparent now than we've ever seen. To the point now where most of the silver that is consumed uh, in products and goods and services means that it's going to react in the markets like a commodity as opposed to a monetary metal. Although gold is a commodity too, and it trades like a commodity to some extent. Really, when it's all said and done, uh, silver has a much more diverse and much smaller market. Some people think that because of the market of silver is so tiny, it's much easier to manipulate. The derivatives market is so far outstretched compared to gold that many people feel that's where a lot of the manipulation occurs. And that manipulation is to the downside. That's called, that's called silver price suppression. We know manipulation does exist for both metals, but many people feel that silver's price is suppressed because it's a tiny market. But when you take into account natural market forces and psycho psychology, and the investment demand for these products and the industrial demand for these products, silver is a metal that is going to fluctuate much more greatly in that area than gold. We've seen that play out time and time again in the markets. 
Silver is just a metal that uh, certainly um, will move uh, up and down in a much more dramatic nature. And that's been the case for a long time, but it seems ever so more apparent as uh, more folks talk about it and we can see these numbers move in real time now with great ease. And, uh, and that frustrates many. Uh, but probably the most important thing that people think about when they think of silver is price suppression. And I think there's certain elements that do suppress the price. And I think the biggest culprit of that is the Federal Reserve. And so because silver moves in a more dramatic uh, uh, flare than, than gold does, well, that gesticulation of the price is something that is more apparent when the Federal Reserve hints at cutting or, or uh, raising rates. It's going to have a more dramatic impact because their goal is to stabilize the dollar to the expense of gold and silver's price movement. You know, they want to suppress the price of gold and silver to keep the dollar strong. And so far, that's been working, at least to a great extent with silver, not so much for gold. And that's the frustration, frustrating, frustrating thing. And that's why gold really is the culprit here. Uh, but keep in mind that the complexity of the silver market and how much it is used uh, and how much it relies on a healthy economy for a good price uh, st structure, even in the midst of inflation, means that its price is not going to react the way you think it should. There's a push and pull on silver's price in that regard. And able trade is often along with copper, lead, and zinc uh, as it would gold and other metals precious metals. And that's kind of frustrating for many of us. We've been hearing for several years about the increased demand for silver, not enough silver to meet demand in the industrial side. Uh, and there's less, but that kind of uh, has a balance for the uh, less demand on the investment side for stacking coins, rounds, and bars. And, and when you have less demand there, then that's going to counterbalance the increased demand in the, in the industrial sector. But that also has other areas and some nuance there as well. Like, for instance, last year, some of that increased demand was uh, gobbled up by further influx of uh, recyclable silver into the, uh, into the market. And that offset and causing the silver price to kind of stay stable or not rise as much as many people think it should. But the nuance, the psychology of the markets, which is very, very powerful, means that the markets react irrationally on many different levels, leading many people to think because of the nature of what I just talked about, that silver is undervalued compared to gold. I actually believe that as well, that it is undervalued compared to gold. As to how much, well, that's up for interpretation. I don't think it's terribly undervalued, but I do think it should be um, up more. In fact, I think right now it should probably be uh, somewhere around the neighborhood of 40 to $45 an ounce, maybe even higher. wouldn't be unreasonable to suggest that considering that gold's price is trading at an all-time high as I record this video. And silver is very far from that. However, it is catching up a little bit, but not according to the gold to silver ratio. It is only barely getting there. Um, and that's just because of the nature of of what gold is compared to silver. Gold being treasured means there's less of it available uh, for those of us who um, um, want to buy it or to accumulate it. And it is a rarer metal than, than silver in every way as well, too. Because uh, even though silver is consumed, uh, much of that consumption is being recycled. And they are finding more efficient ways to recycle it every day. No question about it. Uh, it's just a matter of, of putting that into work. And then you have the mining sector, where is, there's about seven ounces, seven to nine ounces of silver mined for every ounce of gold mined out of the Earth's crust every year. Um, and then the above ground stocks of gold to silver um, and the available silver for those of us who stack the metal, who buy it, and then the number of ounces uh, that are needed for industrial use, biomedicine and uh, photovoltaics, all kinds of different ways in industry. Uh, technology is an amazing thing, and you see it utilized in EVs, hybrid vehicles especially, which is kind of replacing the lackluster EV demand. But that's just it. The nuance of the industrial side means that if any of that falls, if we, if we find ourselves heading into a recession or a deep recession, expect gold to fall, but silver to fall even more, maybe even crash, as people will yet again, even though we have inflation, 
They will probably run to the safety of cash. It seems to happen every single time, uh, like what happened in March of 2020. Although with inflation where it is now, it may not be quite as severe, but yes, we could very likely see um, silver prices fall and maybe even a deflationary environment where silver prices fall much more dramatically than gold, but maybe not fall as low as what we saw during the pandemic. And that would really frustrate folks because silver is supposed to protect against inflation like gold is, uh, but it's, you have to have a much more in tune strategy to make that happen for silver. Really work out your dollar cost average in order to make that happen. And so uh, the, the answer to all of this is to understand these markets. And I hope this video was to help you to make sense of all that. If you found value in what I do provide here in this video and other videos on this channel, I hope you would consider pressing that thumbs up button down below and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. My aim and goal here is to help you understand more about the gold and silver markets and to also learn from you uh, and your thoughts in the comment section down below. I get a lot of valuable information from what people say there and it really does help me to help better serve you. So let me know what your thoughts are about this video and this topic. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch and to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.